let's talk, how does this work? So our goal was we really wanted to make someone who is comfortable writing Python scripts sort of immediately have the superpower of being a Python app developer. How do we do that? Streamlit works on three simple principles. If you understand those principles, you understand all of Streamlit. Number one, embrace Python scripting. So Streamlit apps are actually just scripts that run from top to bottom. So if you can write everything that you can do in a Python script, factor things into functions, write it in your favorite uh, IDE, whatever, it all works perfectly in Streamlit. So this is a little hello world. We'll write this in a second. Uh, and there it is executing as an app. Okay, number two, treat widgets as variables. So here in my script, you see that I've inserted this uh, streamlit function called st.slider. And anytime you have a variable anywhere in your scripts that you'd like to make interactive, you can just substitute st.slider or any kind of widget that you want. And it sort of automatically uh, assembles the UI so that that's now um, a, something that can be changed interactively. And finally, reuse data and computation. So I'm going to talk about this thing called uh, ST cache. But what that allows us to do is actually play this trick of rerunning scripts over and over again without it being insanely slow by caching computation. So that's the uh, basic of Streamlit. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to go to a GitHub repo and um, just copy a little bit of code. So go to github.com slash streamlit. Okay, I'll do it over here. Oh, there it is. GitHub.com slash streamlit. Here we are. And then we're going to go to um, demo Uber NYC pickups. Really, the only reason why we're doing this part is because there's like a little snippet of code to download the data that's super annoying to write, and I would not want to describe it to you like character by character. So we're going to go here. Here is um, here's here we are, and then we're going to click on app.py. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's just zoom in a little bit. Let's grab everything from line 47 up. Oops, we don't need the whole license. We can start to import Streamlit as ST. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to go over to my text editor here. Oops, I already pasted it in. And here we have uh, lines 1 through, now, now it's 1 through 29. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm, this, this guy I'm calling it hello.py. Um, you could call it anything you want. I'm going to, um, here we are on my, my little uh, text editor here. I'm going to say streamlet run hello.py. OK. Um, so. What's going on here? So a uh, couple things. Um, first of all, we have this little title thing at the top. So um, these are these, you know, there, there's actually very few function calls in Streamlit, so it's pretty easy to learn. Um, but you know, we have st title, uh, or another way that we could do that is we could just say st write. Um, oh, and now when I save my file, this is a little trick that we're just borrowing from like web development. Uh, it's actually going to scan the file. And it's going to say, we saw a change in your file. Do you want to uh, update what you're seeing on the right? So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to do that. Always rerun. OK. And now you see that Uber pickups in New York City got smaller. And this is actually marked down. So we could just make it big again, or we can make it a little bit smaller. Oops. Uh, the other thing that we could do, by the way, if you're in Python 3, is you can, anytime Streamlit sees a uh, Python object, uh, which is not a function call, um, it, uh, it, it wraps it in st.write. So we could also just go like this. Oops. OK, so that looks kind of nice. We could also get rid of this markdown. Oops. OK, I'm just showing some random stuff. You don't need to follow along with this. I'll, I'll tell you when to follow along again. OK, cool. And we could add some whys. OK, cool. 
Uh, I'm actually going to delete this because who cares? So now here's where things are interesting. We're going to load a little bit of data uh, from uh, from the web, and then we're going to do some non-trivial computation. Like, well, this is not like mind-blowing computation that will get at you a PhD, but it actually takes a little bit of time, which is what I mean by non-trivial. So. Um, First of all, we're going to load 100,000 lines of this data. These are Uber pickups in New York City. It's the fun little data set you can get online. And we are going to uh, rename the columns. Um, and we are going to convert one of the columns, which is a string, to a date time. And believe it or not, well, you probably you guys know this. It act, that's actually a very time-consuming thing to do. Uh, it's like a high entropy code path to turn a string into a date time. So OK. Uh, and now, now we can take a look at the data. So I'm just going to say uh, data. And I'm going to tell Streamlit to display it. OK. And, uh, and here we're looking at these pickups. So what do we have here? These are This is the date time of the pickup. Um, and then this is the latitude, and this is the longitude. And this is something called a base that we have no idea what that is. But it's always the same thing. Um, and typically. And a script like this would actually be um, slow to rerun because we have to go to the web, download all this data, do all these transformations. So why is it not slow in this case? It's because of this stcache annotation. Uh, actually, we don't need this either. This, you can keep it if you want, but I'm going to delete it. Um, so uh, here it is running. Um, and then what this annotation does is basically say, store this data, and then Every time I see this function call again, if I already know the answer, just substitute it back in. So uh, for major computer science nerds, this is just memoization. Uh, but um, it, uh, in this case, um, it means that we can uh, now play with this data set like, basically interactively, even in the context of this script. So for example, um, I can add, we can look at only the Uber pickups at noon. So I'll say hour equals noon, and then we'll do a little filter. Date, time, DT. OK, and now we're looking at only the uh, Uber pickups at noon. And if I change this to 11, this is sort of the beginning of the streamlit magic it updates instantly. Okay, So where, where we are now is that we have this ability to um, quickly filter through this data just by changing um, one variable here. So there it's 10 AM, 11 AM. Um, OK, let's do something more fun, which is actually map the data. So let's, just, let's, let's say raw data. Raw data at. OK, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here. But this, OK, so this is the raw data at 11 AM. Now let's actually map it. So we'll put something here, and we'll say geodata. And now I'm going to use a new visualization function, which is st.map. OK. Now we're actually looking at where these pickups are happening, right? Um, and this is, by the way, using DeckGL. And so uh, this is pretty cool. Um, so now we're going to get to how would you uh, play with interaction. Um, and so th the first thing to note is that basically all I've shown you right now is how to write scripts that output something to a web browser like super quickly and hopefully not without too much difficulty. But this is not what you would call an app yet. Okay. But on the other hand, it is very much in the style of an ordinary Python script. We load some data, we transform it, and so on. OK, so now we're going to make it into an actual app. So as I mentioned, let's, let's substitute this variable for a, uh, for a widget. So let's call this hour. And here we go, min value, max value. OK, so 0, 24 which I think it's 23. There we go. OK, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see this better. OK. And now you'll see that as I change, let's zoom in over here. As I change this, um, everything updates, right? 
Um, and in fact, uh, you'll like for example, it's not like rebuilding the web page from scratch every time. In fact, it's very intelligently diffing uh, what was in the web page with respect to the data that your app has, and then sending only the deltas that are required to make that possible. That's one of the reasons why it's so fast. Um, and uh, and so okay, H had I not known how ST Slider works, just I'm just randomly riffing here. Uh, we could actually just take a look at ST Slider. And here is the uh, documentation for it, just a fun little trick. Um, uh, another fun little trick is like, well, you know, this kind of annoying how uh, this thing is is right there. Uh, maybe I can move it to the left. So instead of saying ST.slider, there's another area you have access to, which is called the sidebar. ST.sidebar.slider. Now we've got a nice little sidebar there. Let's zoom out. Cool, right? And now this map, it's a little boring. Uh, it so happens that DeckGL is like super amazing and like insanely customizable. Um, rather than actually type in all kinds of crazy DeckGL, I'm just gonna copy it from GitHub because it looks cooler that way. Okay, we're just gonna replace that one line with about maybe 15 lines of code. Okay, and now we have a really cool 3D visualization of all these different things, right? And, and by the way, you know, if we didn't like a slider, we could make this a, um, what, what, can we, what could we make this? Oh, I think we have something called a num input now. This is actually cool. No. Well, leave it as a slider for now. I can't remember what it's called. There we go, cool. So now we have the same thing, but with a different kind of widget, for example. Uh, and then here too, like you know, maybe you know, we we don't we don't always want to look at these. This is more sort of like a debugging thing. So I'm going to show you another cool thing we could do. We could say we're going to use a different type of construct if st dot checkbox show raw data. Okay, so now we've, the data is kind of hidden back there. See that? So notice that we're not writing any callbacks, we're not doing any kind of declarative layout, we're really just instrumenting a script with these ST calls. And what they're doing is they're allowing us to control the control flow at the same time as insert UI elements, which produce this script that you can uh, play with uh, and, and share with others.